Good morning, everyone. It's your friendly pastor, Bob Branch, and I'm here to give you another installment of the Daily Devo. We've been doing these things because basically we're committed to encourage you and to feed you and to build up your faith and to help us all cope in these kind of weird and bizarre pandemic crisis times. I've been, as I think about these things and as I pray for you, the Lord reminds me of different things that I need to talk about with you. And some of the, sometimes it's in Psalm 23 as we've been going through that, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's other things. And I believe that the Lord spoke to me yesterday and said, I want you to talk to them about this simple thing. Pray together. Pray together. That is that we need to, in this time, this coronavirus crisis time, that we need to actually cultivate some new habits that we're not necessarily doing at this point in time. And one of them is that we actually pray together, not just on our own, not just having our own little personal quiet times with the Lord, although that's important, but that we cultivate the habit of praying with these people that are closest to us, praying for the, with the people, not for, but with the people that we are in contact with continually. That is that husbands and wives spend a little bit of time praying. It's not an hour prayer meeting, but at least a little bit of time praying each day, just cultivating the practice, cultivating the rhythm of prayer together. Becky and I pray you know, re reasonably, routinely um, with each other because we value that. Now, it's not because we're trying to one-up each other in terms of who's more spiritual or anything like that. Uh, it's not a race. She's more spiritual than I am. It's just the way that it is. But the reality is that we cultivate these things. They're learned activities. And so we learn how to pray together. And I found that initially when I was a young husband, I was a little threatened by praying with my wife, even though I was a pastor. It just felt weird. It felt like, gosh, we're somehow in a competition here. But we're not. And years later, we began to learn how to pray together and prophesy over each other. Parents, pray with your kids do it on a daily basis. Get in the habit of doing this so that when this crisis is over, we have these new these new habits to carry forward into our lives. Pray together. Now, how do you do, how would you do that? Well, I think a lot of us are just a little kooky when it comes to this that we don't we think, well, I know how to pray. I know how to pray on my own, but I don't know how to pray with my wife or I don't know how to pray with my kids. Yes, you do. You know how to carry on a conversation with somebody so you know how to pray. You can carry on a conversation with God. You can carry on a conversation with God with somebody else. It's that simple. So I remember when I was first learning how to pray out loud, it was actually about five or six months before I even came to Christ. I was at a youth group meeting. We were in this big circle at the end of the youth group meeting. And because my brother was a leader in the youth group, four years older than I am, uh, you know, the leader thought, well, Bob's brother knows how to pray out loud, so I'm just going to ask Bob to close us in a word of prayer. And so he says, Bob, you can close us after several people, you know, pray. And so several people pray. My blood pressure is going up through the roof. I'm getting scared out of my wits. I don't know the first thing about praying out loud. I don't know what to do. I felt like such an idiot. And finally, the the eyes that my eyes made contact with the other youth leaders eyes and he could see the abject terror in my eyes and thought okay I'll land the plane and so he closed out and I thought I don't know what I'm doing I don't even know this God who I'm praying to at that point in time I was like whoa this is nuts this is really nuts but over time I learned how to pray and and there were times when I was in youth group when I was a kid where I think I prayed a little too much. I prayed a little too eloquently and I kind of like how it sounded. This isn't that. This is just con conversing with God together. That's what we're doing. And so I want to encourage you. Here's some steps. Here's some things that you can add to this if you don't already do it. Here's some things that you could try out. And it doesn't have to be for a long time. It could be a whole minute. It could be two to five minutes. That's all. It doesn't have to be anything gigantic. It just has to be a step. And I want to tell you, husbands, if you're listening to this, this is one of the things that will really light your light the fire inside of your wife in terms of this is just easy stuff that we can do to show some spiritual leadership. And it's not difficult. So what do you do? Well, first, I think it's easiest just to start thanking God, that we start thanking God for the things that he has done and the immediate things and the people that are in our lives. And we just basically start to thank him. I mean, Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. It's part of the way that we move closer into the presence of God. Not that he's ever far away, but we're, we're moving nearer to him, if you will. 
And so we get our thanker going. We start thanking God. Lord, thank you for my kids. They're, they're just amazing. I have amazing kids. I have an amazing family. Gosh, I have a, an amazing church. I have amazing friends. I have an amazing God. I All these things I'm thankful for. And once you start getting th your thanker going, you start thanking God aloud. It, it'll take off from there. Don't worry about it. And then and then secondly, I would say, don't worry about trying to get this over with. Pray slowly. Pray, and it's okay to say, hey, can we pray? And then Becca and I pray often. We'll just say, well, let's see, you know, can we pray together? Yeah, okay. And so we start. And there's a long period of silence. And I think, you know, both of us are trying to get our rhythms down. We're trying to get, you know, the, the routines and everything that we've got coming that day. We're trying to just set this stuff down before God and say, Lord, we want to focus on you. We want to focus on you together. And so we wait. We slow it down. And then uh, frequently, I think both of us listen for the voice of the Spirit. And so, and the Spirit will frequently give us clues about different things that we can pray about. People, different things that our kids are going through, different things that we're going through, and those different, all that kind of stuff. I, I, I think in this, sort of like Martha and Mary, where Martha's really in a hurry to get everything done. Mary's just sitting with Jesus. And she's listening to what he said. And I think this is along those lines, that we're listening for the voice of the Spirit. And prayer is not just talking. Prayer is also listening. If prayer is conversing, it is talking and it's listening. It's requesting and it's being responsive internally. And so we slow down our rhythms. We listen to God and we pray slowly and we move from there. Thirdly, we pray believing. I mean, that's a big deal. Jesus actually, he gives this beautiful invitation and he says, ask and it will be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened for everyone who asks, receives. To the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door is open. And then he gives this very interesting statement about the character of God. And the one that we're asking of, he says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a snake? Now, this is Jewish humor. They would have been like, stop, Jesus, this is, wow, this is too funny. But Jesus is making a point. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? So we're asking built on the idea that God invites us to ask. God invites us to seek. God invites us to knock. And it's his character of care that he is so much better than we are even on our best days as parents in wanting to be responsive to our kids. So we pray, believing that God actually, that this actually matters, that this isn't just trivial, and that when we pray, God is responsive to these things. I don't think that prayer changes things, but prayer moves the heart and the hand, the one who does change things. I think that's more accurate. Fourth, I would say that prayer is also speaking the truth. I, I, sit, I sit with Becky practically every day. She's a marriage and family therapist. And when she is about to go out and she's going to be giving counsel, I, I pray this very simple prayer. I say, Lord, would you let her have her two tool belts? That she'll have the tool belt of her of spiritual gifts on the left and of word of knowledge and wisdom and, and your kind of God, divine counsel and on the left. And on her right, she would have her training and all the tr good training that she's got in helping people. And I ask you, Lord, that you would give her the discernment to know which tool to pull, pull from which belt in, in, in each and every situation and every second of every meeting that she has with people. Lord, would you kiss this from heaven? Would you allow your presence to come and bless her? And then I speak that truth over. I just speak that you're going to bring the solution of God to, to many people. I pray breakthrough through you in Jesus' name. I pray that God would, would be doing these things and stirring these things in you. And, it, and there's a, a prayer kind of speaking the truth at the same time. I would say that kind of along those lines, but a little different, is that we also pray blessing, that I pray blessing over my kids. I pray, pray blessing over you all that are listening to this. I pray the, God, the blessing of God on you all the time. And I'm counting on that God is going to bless you as I'm praying. But again, this is all in the course of conversation with my wife, with my kids. Um, 
And these are just meaningful things that we do. I want to encourage you. I want to ask you, get out on the playing field of prayer together. You have a chance. Maybe some of you are, you know, you're, you're together at home and you're not used to, you're used to being at work, you know, both spouses off at work and now you're at home and you're getting tired of each other. Perhaps you're getting annoyed with each other and maybe God is working in that. So I want to ask you to start praying. It's okay for either one to say, hey, can we pray right now? So if Becky, it used to be that if Becky said, hey, can we pray right now? I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Are you just saying that I'm not spiritual? And it's like, no, I just asked you if I, if we could pray. And so she will ask, and either one of us will initiate a prayer time. And we pray, you know, kind of at the drop of a hat. I also pray with people. If I talk to them on the phone, if I'm talking to them on Skype or FaceTime, I pray with them. If I meet, if I happen to meet with them six feet away, I still pray. I pray with them. I don't pray with them because I'm a pastor. I pray with them because I'm a Christian, because that's what Christians do, because we know that we have the ability to move the hand and the heart of the one that changes everything. And so I want to invite you, get on the playing field with this. You won't regret it. Pray together. Pray together. Let me pray for you. Of course, right? Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would allow us to get on the playing field together, that you would allow us to pray with our spouses, that you would allow us to pray friend to friend, that you would allow us just grace to pray with our kids, that you would allow us to just have on a, a walking, talking conversation, listening conversation with you that's going on all the time. I ask you, Lord, that there would overcome us a, a naturalness to this whole thing, an organic sort of aspect to this whole thing. That's not, we don't all of a sudden switch into a religious gear. We just talk to you because you love us and you've invited us in. I thank you so much for that, Jesus. And I thank you for each one of these people listening in today. Would you bless them now? Would you pour your spirit on them now? Would you pour healing into them? Would you calm their nerves and their fear? I pray all this, Lord Jesus, in your name. One last thing. I just want to tell you, I love you. I love you. So glad that you tuned in today. I'm praying that God will bring people into your life today that will be his hands and his heart and that he will use you in the lives of others to be his hands and his heart. Until tomorrow, until next time, God bless you.